Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. And tonight, a different crisis in Del Rio. Americans stranded on the Mexican side. Mexican nationals stranded on the U.S. side. The international bridge connecting Acuna and Del Rio shut down tonight. The federal government closing this port of entry at 6 p.m., saying the closure was to respond to urgent safety and security needs. The traffic backed up for miles. It appears no one but officials knew about that closure, and this is the reason for that closure. The more than 13 15,000 migrants stuck under the International Bridge. The night team's John Paul Barajas has been reporting all day in Del Rio. He spoke with people on both sides who are just trying to get home. Bumper to bumper traffic. Mexican nationals working in the U.S. stuck with no place to go. A statement from U.S. Customs and Border Protection didn't say when the Del Rio International Bridge will reopen. It's not going to open right now. Del Rio police on scene had to start turning people away. It's a cluster of confusion, concern, and frustration. Ana Padron's a working mom. Her kids are in Acuna, but she has no idea when she'll be able to pick them up from her grandmother's. Padron says if this closure lasts all night, she'll probably have to sleep in her car. She thinks it isn't safe enough to make the hour drive to the Eagle Passport of Entry. That's where all normal travel and trade is being routed to. We spoke to this woman earlier today. She's a U.S. citizen and does business in Mexico. After our interview, she went across and now she's stuck and tells us the only way out is driving to another port, but the town to go through to get there is dangerous. Is there any concern of danger for U.S. citizens stuck in a food? Not really. Well, but I live over there, so I have a house over there. Rosa Luz and Acuna local agreed, explaining the city of Piedras isn't a place you want to be once it gets dark. Well, Piedras, it, it isn't safe. Piedras, there's like shootings in, over there. And those long lines we just showed you are no longer here. They've been turned around and pushed back. As for the woman we spoke with who is stuck in Mexico, she's now made it through Piedras and is at the Eagle Pass port of entry, but she says she's waiting in lines that are miles long. And again, the most frustrating thing for the people that are still here is they still have no idea when this port of entry will reopen. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. Now the main reason why they shut down that bridge. Most of the migrants crossing into the Rio Grande in the United States and staying under that bridge tonight are Haitians. The Associated Press reporting tonight the Biden administration will be putting them on flights and sending them back to Haiti. Humanitarian groups say people are fleeing that country because it's in turmoil. In July, the Haitian president assassinated. There was a 7.2 magnitude earthquake in August. Haitians have been on the move since 2010 when another quake forced them out. The asylum seekers must wait to be processed, a legal process that allows them to give themselves up at the border before their legal case is heard. The number of migrants increased each day for the past week. More than 200,000 people crossed the southwest border in the month of August. That's according to the latest numbers from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. That number four times more than last August. The total this fiscal year so far, more than 1.5 million. The New York Times reporting that's the highest in two decades. The majority are single adults followed by family units. This is a developing story we will continue to follow on air and online. Now to the back and forth over COVID-19 booster shots. Today, a clearer answer after an FDA advisory panel recommends Pfizer boosters for people 65 and older, along with those who are considered at high risk for COVID-19. At the same time, though, the panel declined to recommend boosters for all Americans, something the Biden administration was pushing for. We spoke to the president of the Texas Biomedical Research Institute about that decision. Texas Biomed helped in the development of the vaccine. The president says in the meantime, the focus right now should still be on the sizable portion of people who remain unvaccinated. So although boosters will be quite important, we'll need to evaluate them to help us protect those that are vaccinated. Let's vaccinate more people. That is the way that we're going to get over this pandemic. So what happens next? The CDC will weigh in on the recommendations and if the FDA agrees with the plan, booster shots would be rolled out as early as next week.
Now to flu season last year it was masked by the COVID-19 pandemic. Health advocates in San Antonio now trying to get ahead of the flu season this year by getting shots into the arms of as many people in our community as possible. The night team's Patty Santos tells us how the uninsured can get a free shot starting tomorrow. The stage is set for the drive through flu vaccination event at Fremont Coliseum tomorrow. So we're excited to have a an event like this that is free and easy and quick. The clinic sponsored by University Health and Bear County is the first of many. Registration is required to ensure the process is quick. Jennifer Rodriguez with University Health says last year's drive through was a success. We vaccinated almost 4,000 patients. The flu season was mostly mild last year, but this year medical staff are bracing for the worst. Flu cases started popping up in July. Getting them into the arms of the older population is probably the focus right now. Vice President of Operations for Legends Pharmacy says nursing homes are their first clients. She reminds folks that some patients might see side effects from the flu shot. It's 12 hours of just a little bit of discomfort for you know throughout a lot of protection throughout the winter season. The city of San Antonio is also hosting several free flu vaccination pop up clinics. The first two start tomorrow at these locations. The hope is that the free clinics can keep the community healthy. What we really want to prevent is further hospitalizations. A lot of the hospitals right now are full as healthcare workers are taking care of COVID patients. And the flu shot clinics tomorrow at Freeman Coliseum are from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. But you do need to pre-register. And of course, we have all that information on KSET.com. Steve. Thank you, Patty. They were dealt a blow by the pandemic, but managed to survive. Their hard work and determination didn't seem to mean much to two people who broke into the last slice restaurant this week. This is actually the second time that pizza joint near MacArthur View in Nacogdoches was hit. The owner, Alejandro Pérez, says the rocks used in both break-ins, he has them. The first incident happening just after opening a couple years ago. The larger rock used in this latest break-in. Take a look at the surveillance video from Wednesday morning. A man uses that rock to smash through the front door before he and a woman make their way inside. They end up taking a couple monitors and a drawer to a register. Pérez says there was only about $50 in the register but they did about $1,500 worth of damage. For people to, to have the heart to destroy property and steal property from people that are trying to, to make it, it's just uh, it's so heartbreaking. I just hope these people get caught. San Antonio Police investigating this case. If you have any information that can help police, call 210-207-7273. Up next, from fighting for this country to fighting to survive, hear this local vet story of homelessness in hopes you will think about giving back to those in need. A San Antonio Army veteran knows firsthand the struggle of homelessness. Christopher Dubler has walked that journey, but now he's thriving in a new home. Nonprofits like the San Antonio Food Bank, critical resources for him then and now. The night team's Jeffany Gray with his story and how he's encouraging others to give back during Hunger Action Month. You're homeless. You don't have a job. No money coming in. Where are you going to eat? 56-year-old Army veteran Christopher Dupler knows all too well about being homeless. He struggled with it for 15 years. I've been up and down so many times. It's just like I get up there, get on my feet, and start doing better, and then something comes along knocks me right back down and I just go back into a deep depression. He recently moved into a duplex that houses other homeless veterans. It's been easier on being homeless, but put it this way, I mean, I just got tired of it and right now I'm trying to get my mindset back. Dupler also knows what it's like to be hungry. It's what forced him to walk through the San Antonio Food Bank's doors. He realized the nonprofit was more than just a meal on the table. I mean, it's a helping hand and that's what this world needs a lot of helping hands. Food bank helps people out, helps families, especially with kids. And and people don't realize if it wasn't for kids, this world would stop. Dupler says he is now working to get his commercial driver's license to join a trucking company. He hopes his story of obstacles encourages others to donate to the San Antonio Food Bank, 
one meal can make a difference. Help out. Have some compassion. We're all in this world together. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. Live cam tonight, 85 degrees out there. And I, you know, Myra said she's been getting questions about the cold front. <laughs> I've been getting questions about the cold front, but I try to tell them it's a not so hot front. I think that's a non good non meteorological way to put it. <laughs> a not as hot front is what we like to sometimes call them because it will drop high temperatures about 10 degrees, you know, over a three day span. You'll notice that drop, but you'll notice other factors even more. So we'll talk about it in a moment. First, a summer like weekend. Temperatures are above average and today we were actually just one degree shy of a record high and then that weak cold front moves in next week and it will have some noticeable changes. A few rain chances down the pike as well. First is tomorrow, but I want to start with temperatures. Let's get right to this 97. That was our high today. The record 98 set back in 1997 and the average is 90 and that's going to be falling off a degree here in a couple of days. 83 right now dew point is 65. So we have the mugginess outside and temperatures are just a little above average for this time of day. Castroville 88 comforts 81 Canyon Lake 84 and right now in divine 84 degrees. Meanwhile, Del Rio's still 93 and Carrizo Springs 86. So we're feeling the warmth outside, feeling the mugginess. Let's go to tomorrow morning early Saturday, very sticky outside. So if you like that long early morning bike ride, jog, whatever, we'll be in the low 70s, not overly hot, but very humid. So low to mid 70s, that's at sunrise. Then we quickly warm up and make it back into the 90s. And I'm thinking mid 90s for most of us tomorrow afternoon. Of course, back to 100 Laredo, possibly Catula and especially Del Rio, possibly even Eagle Pass. The biggest changes next week will be in terms of the morning temperatures. So the next several mornings are going to be muggy and in the 70s. But behind that cold front by Wednesday and especially this time next week, we're looking at more refreshing mornings. Morning temperatures back down in the low to mid 60s. So we're not talking parka weather here. OK, you don't even need your sweater. This isn't a pumpkin spice front, but it is a change and it's the first real noticeable change coming. Also humidity. So dew points 60s this weekend all the way through Tuesday. But behind that boundary, bingo, we see those dew points down in the 30s and 40s. So a big break in the mugginess behind that cold front that's going to hit us Tuesday evening. Here's our weather pattern right now. This is important. This upper level swirl over East Texas that's going to drift southward near the Gulf coastline and that weak disturbance could be enough to trigger just a few showers or brief thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. We start the morning. A lot of sunshine by the noon hour could have a few pop few showers popping up in the hill country, but into the afternoon we give it about a 20 to 30 percent chance of those limited showers popping up on the radar during the peak heating of the day tomorrow. 70s in the morning, mid to upper 90s in the afternoons this weekend. That slight chance of showers tomorrow afternoon, otherwise a lot of sunshine, not much of a breeze this weekend. I mean, we're talking a variable wind at about two to eight miles per hour at best. Monday, 98, and then there's that drop off as we get into next week. The cold front. Thanks, Kasky. Not so hot front. Not so hot front. Okay, so we move to the high school football big game tonight. You were in Smithson Valley. Yes, that was a big game in our big game coverage tonight. And Smithson Valley is for real this year. When we come back, we'll show you how it went down between the Rangers and Wagger tonight. And number one versus number two on our BGC road trip tonight. Coming up. cheerleaders and you're watching big game coverage on ksat 12. yes they are the big game and our big game coverage tonight is undefeated number three smithson valley hosting two and one wagner in the district 27 6 a showdown in ranger stadium the thunderbirds get on the board first isaiah williams rolls out to markel four for the 21 yard score seven nothing wagner game tied at seven now with smithson valley makes a huge statement one from malachi lane he starts right then he cuts back across the field 61 yard touchdown with a 21 14 rangers at halftime so it takes us to the third quarter now the rangers defense putting up points wagner trying to establish a run but the ball all pops loose. Malachi Lane is there to scoop it up, take it 38 yards the other way, and the route is on the final for Smithson Valley, 42-14 Rangers. Super special, especially after last year's loss. Feels good to come back and win this year. You just, hey, just on to the next one now. Just keep going, keep going. 
Go ahead, win district. We scored in the special teams. We scored on defense and we scored on one explosive run because it's hard to drive the ball all the time. You got to get some other other ways to manufacture points. So we got 21 that way and you know it's a difference in the ball game. All right, time to check out number two ranked Steel Knights as the open district play tonight against East Central. Did not take long for the Knights to see daylight. Quarterback Connor Vincent likes a matchup on the outside and look at this throw to the end zone. A perfect 30 yard strike. On the money to Joe Perez with the score, 7-0 steal. First quarter of the final from Linhaus Steel with a blowout, 49-7. Let's head to Hero Stadium now with Madison clinging to a 7-3 lead over Churchill fourth quarter. Mads quarterback Caden Mata running the option. Reed keeps it first up the middle for the four-yard score. The lead grows to 11. The final from Heroes, Madison with a win, 21-9 over Comalander Stadium. Lead fans going crazy in the stands as their Vols take on Roosevelt. Third quarter, Rough Riders in control. Quarterback Tyran Miller hits Devin Tennyson Shepard for the three-yard touchdown. Roosevelt goes up 49-7 to the Big Gate Cover score board for that final and more. Roosevelt with a big win, 56 to 20. Madison over Churchill, 21 to 9. Elsewhere, Steele with a big blowout, 49 to 7. And Smithson Valley over Wagner, 42 14. Team captains meet at the 50 here to shake hands before kickoff of Holmes against O'Connor. The Huskies coming off their first loss of the season while the Panthers are looking for their first win. One step closer to the first quarter. Panthers on the prowl. O'Connor running the option read to the left. Quarterback John Locke is keeping it and he cuts back to the right at the last second. Open a great misdirection play for a 20 yard gain later in the same drive. Running back Aaron O'Leary us will put the Panthers on the board. The 30-yard score, 7-0 O'Connor. The final from Ferris. Holmes comes back to win that one, 39-14. The Stevens Falcons also looking for their first win of the season with Harlan up 10-7 in the second when we arrive at Gus's Stadium. The Hawks take to the sky. Play action pass, Braden Bedford to Isaiah Manchester, 20 yards down the sideline, a great pitch and catch. Later, Harlan running the Wildcat. Jacob Gonzalez is going to take the snap, keeps it on the option read, sprints up the middle for the touchdown. The eight-yard score puts Harlan up by 10, 17-7. The final from Gustafson. There you see Harlan with the win, 38-24. The South Sam Bobcats would have their hands full tonight with a visit Visiting Clemens Buffalo as they start the stampede right away from the beginning. Running back Torian Smith is going to get through the line, slips by two defenders, is running free 24 yards to the end zone. 7 0 Clemens in that final from South San. Clemens with the win, 41 7. Head to Orem Stadium. Number six, Alamo Heights taking on Canyon Lake. Second half, Mules rolling. Quarterback James Sobey throws a fade for Rhett Anderson. He hauls it in with one foot inbounds. Great catch with a three yard score. Another big win for the Mules tonight. Let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final. 38 30, 38 21, Alamo Heights. South San Forest. Falls to Clemens, 41 to seven. Holmes with a big win over O'Connor, and Harlan outlasts Stevens, 38-24. The Memorial Cheerleaders doing their best to start the rally. They're down to Brackeridge, 21-6, but it seems to be working. Elijah Cantu to Matthew Rubio on the slam for six. They miss the extra point, but the lead is down to nine. The Eagles don't quit. Richard Lopez to Brandon Garcia connects for the three-yard TD. Eagles up 28-12. At that point, the final from Edgewood Veterans. You see Brackeridge with the win, 42-20. The Burbank Bulldogs looking tough as they have a seven-nothing lead over Edison as we arrive at SAISD. Sports Complex. Bulldogs add to that lead. Ramiro Salazar buying some time in the pocket until he sees Andrew Bunteo open downfield. He launches a 24-yard strike for the score. 14-0 Bulldogs. The final. Look at that overtime. Burbank holds on 27-26. Mighty Mustangs at Thomas Jefferson High School looking for their first win of the season against the Highland House. Highlands goes for it on fourth and six on their own 45. Jacob Gutierrez is going to get chased out of the pocket. He wants to throw but has to run for it. He gets the first down and then some. He gets all the way to the Jefferson 30-yard line for a 25-yard gain. The Owls keep it on the ground then to Marion Gonzalez takes a handoff finds some daylight makes his way for a 16 yard score that made it seven nothing Highlands the final from Alamo 22 nothing Highlands big game coverage now back to the scoreboard we go veterans Memorial Falls is again 23 21 Highlands you saw that game just now 22 to nothing over Jefferson Memorial falling to Brackeridge and Edison losing to Burbank in overtime Southside Cardinals trying to pull out the comeback against Floresville down 28 to 14 when we arrive Isaiah Moreno in a quarterback for the Cardinals he finds Donovan Island knees on the slant for the score, and it's a one touchdown game. But the Tigers bite back. Darian Murphy is going to get the handoff, goes right up the middle, diving in the end zone for the score. Let's check that final. Southside falls 34 21. McCollum was something to cheer about as they lead Buta Johnson 7 0 in the second when we arrive. But the Jaguars claw their way back. Jesse Medina on the bootleg spots Aiden Rodriguez wide open in the back of the end zone. This ties the game at 7 all. Let's see how that finished out at Harlandale Memorial. 58 to 14 Johnson at Bob Benson Stadium tonight right across the street Central Catholic taking on Laredo United South first half buttons on the roll here quarterback Silas Gomez avoids the pressure rolling to his left finds Michael Mayhew for the 12 yard touchdown another huge night for the buttons knocking off another 6 8 school back to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final and more central with a huge win 39 to 17 Holy Cross to the shutout of Pierce Hall 49 to nothing elsewhere you see Flores over Southside 34 21 Buta Johnson McCullum 58 to 14 we're just getting started up next 
Our big game coverage, road trip, fan cam, and more highlights and more scores. But first, let's listen to the Burbank Bulldogs marching band. Road trip features number one and number two teams in 12's top 12 sub 5A poll, and that's where we find our Larry Ramirez tonight, live from Poth. Yeah, hey, Greg, and thank you very much. The Pirate faithful left here a little bummed out tonight, and that's because Shiner is a very, very good football team, and more than just Doug and Dalton Brooks. <laughs> Fans of all sizes in Jordan 10 to watch the Indians and Eagle Pass CC win Mavericks first quarter. Win ball up 7 to nothing in driving. Francisco Valdez runs to his left, and he gets tackled by the Indians. Luke Tapp, no gain on the play, no food for you. Two plays later, though, handoff goes to Jeremiah Robinson, and he does the rest. Nine-yard touchdown for the Mavericks, and CC win leads 14-10. to A packed house in Pleasanton tonight for the Eagles and Divine War Horses. Hello, Eagle mascot. Second quarter, Divine down 14-6 and punting the ball. Eagles number 88, Diego Luna catches the ball. He drops it. He picks it up, drops it again. Hey, no worries. Luna runs to his left and right past the Eagles bench to the end zone. He goes for a 70-yard punt return touchdown. How about that? Eagles go up 21-6. to And right here, the Shiner Comanches at the Poth Pirates. The Comanches were up 21-10 to at halftime when we got here. Fourth quarter, Pirates ball deep in their territory. Quarterback Zane Robbie trying to make something happen while avoiding the rush. He throws, and it's intercepted by Drew Winsky, and he takes it back for an 18-yard pick six. to put Shiner on top, 32-10. to Let's go to the scoreboard now for those finals. Jordan 10 goes on to win 30-21 to for their first win this season season. Pleasanton improves to 3-1 and one after beating Divine 35-12. to 12. And right here, Shina remains undefeated. They beat Poth 39-10. to 10. So this was Poth's final tune-up before they open a district play next week at Carn City. And I'll tell you what, Greg, Poth is everything they are advertised, and those Brooks Brothers are darn good. Back yeah, Shiner is, is the team to beat again. Right. Thank you, Larry. Time now for Fan Cam, where you are fans help us cover one of the big games on our big game covers tonight. Here's our Andrew Seeley. Pre-game pep rally getting the fans at Cornerstone all fired up. Warriors hosting Eagle Pass tonight. Home team down 3-0 in the first quarter, not for long. Check out Ivan Hoyt on the direct snap, powering through a tackle. He stays on his feet and takes off for the near sideline, and he is gone. A 66-yard touchdown run, 7-3 Cornerstone. Eagle Pass answers on the ensuing drive. Isaac Stanwick finds Kyle Gloria in the end zone. An 8-yard pitch and catch makes it 10-7 Eagles. But the Warriors respond. This time it's quarterback Diego Nareso weaving his way through traffic and diving over the goal line for the 14-yard touchdown. Count the two-point conversion, and it's 15-10 to 10 Cornerstone. That is the score as Fan Cam departs midway through the second quarter. Cornerstone leading Eagle Pass 15-10. to 10. For Fan Cam, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, thanks a lot, Andrew. Let's go back to the big game cover scoreboard for the final in that game. You see Cornerstone, it is still in the fourth right now. At least that's the last score we got. 50-10. to 10. Antonian over Blanco tonight, 28-18. to 18. South San West Campus falls to his church, John Paul II, 35 to nothing. Somerset over Beville Jones, 27 to 13. Elsewhere, Bernie Champion at home beats Laredo United, 42 to 14. Bernie on the road, by the way, in Sweetwater. They have a big win, 54 to 16. How about Medina Valley and Southwest? Southwest with a big win on the road in Castroville, 39 14. And Southwest Legacy over Del Rio, 17 to 14. If you missed anything, and I would find that hard to believe, but if you did, you can go to BGC.com and, of course, catch up on anything. And tomorrow night on Saturday night, don't forget the BGC app for all the live games broadcast by Texas Sports Productions. Yep, we got you covered. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. A few showers could pop up tomorrow afternoon and early evening. Otherwise, sunny and summer-like this weekend. High humidity, even near 100 by Monday. Then temperatures tumble a bit, especially in the mornings by the middle of next week. Thank you, Adam. That's it for the night beat. Don't forget, Good Morning San Antonio starts at 6 a.m. Have a great